Hi, I'm Harry Friedman. I've been a professional comedian for over 33 years with credits that include Everybody Loves Raymond, as well as a full page profile in the business section of the New York Times. I've also been producing comedy shows for about 25 years. Over the years, I've had the good fortune to work with some of the biggest names in entertainment, including Jerry Seinfeld and Ray Romano. But I've also worked with a lot of other very funny comedians that you probably never even heard of before. The bottom line is, I know what kind of act works for each situation, and I know how to put together a great show. So whether you're looking for a comedian for a private party, a charity event, a fundraiser, a fire department, a temple, a commerce chamber, or pretty much any situation at all, I will handpick the very best comedians for your show. Here's just a few clips of some of the shows I recently produced. Take a look. I love talking on the ground. You never know what you're going to get. I said to a guy in your seat one time, what do you do for a living? He looked at me seriously. He was not kidding. He said, I disinfect bowling shoes. <laughs> I could not hold back. I'm sorry, sir. That's the lowest job I've ever heard. Then I said to the guy next to him, what do you do for a living? And he said, I was assistant. <laughs> Hi, Brittany. How are you? And what do you do? You're an aspiring entrepreneur. You are so unemployed, it's not even funny. <laughs> One time I said to a kid, look, I didn't fail you. You failed yourself. A couple hours later, I see the kid in the hall. He goes, yo, I didn't key your car. Your car keyed itself. <laughs> probably stay away from the North Shore. <laughs> where our official motto is, what happens when you're in anesthesia pretty much ends up in Vegas. <laughs> and, uh, some of you guys remember there was a doctor about 10 years ago, he was pretty famous, he carved his initials in a woman's abdomen. Remember that guy? Yes. Since that happened, I'm doing comedy on a full-time basis. <laughs> That's why I listen to music to relax every time I do an operation. A lot of doctors do this. I typically start an operation off, for example, with K Sera Sera. <laughs> Depending on what happens, I end up with He's a Magic Man or Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> Back there, I remember the first time I did surgery, a nurse comes running in, she goes, you gotta be sterile, you gotta be sterile. I didn't know what to do. I went out, I got a vasectomy. <laughs> Terrorism in other countries is much worse. Israel, it's so bad they use pigs to sniff out explosives. How unfair is that? These pigs are sitting there going, I'm in the one country in the world I thought I was perfectly safe. <laughs> I wish I could turn into a cow and move to India. <laughs> there are good things, same-sex marriage, legal in New York. I think that's terrific, because my wife and I are married 23 years. We've been having the same sex the entire time. <laughs> I think everybody should have to suffer. <laughs> you guys have been such a nice crowd. We have a great headliner. If you're interested, when the show is all over, if you want, we'll go to CBS. I'll write drugs up for everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. You go so fast that when you pass me, I get that shake.
Finally, I back out of my driveway. <laughs> I always get asked about kangaroos because we have so many of them. There are more kangaroos in Australia than there are people, so the misconception is that if you visit, kangaroos will be everywhere. Like you might walk into a bank. <laughs> and there will be one there working part-time as a teller behind the counter. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> you want some pocket money? <laughs> now, driving was a nightmare. Not only now must I drive on the opposite side of the road in the car, I have to do it in snow. So I'm thinking, I've never done this before. <laughs> and I thought, wait a minute. These people, they're New Yorkers. They've been here all their lives. They're used to these conditions. They're tough. They're in control. They know what they're doing. Follow them. Well, that was a pretty disturbing response. I learned something from all of you. I realized when it snows that much, you guys simply decide, it's a pick a lane free for all. <laughs> Not much snow here, congratulations. This is now the lane. But you're in the cereal aisle of Stop and Shop. <laughs> then I, I looked in the rearview mirror. I had the worst realization. I was leading the pack. <laughs> <laughs> then I had a thought, which turned into a question: Why would Bing Crosby dream of this crap? <laughs> And I realized it's because he was drunk most of his adult life. <laughs> <laughs>